Digger Dave Beeler here, uh, Sunday, February 16th, 2020, and I'm going to do a little series or a little talk on uh, glass blowing, and um, I'm going to just start in on some of the older bottles that I've got in my own collection and explain how they're made, uh, talk about, you know, from the earliest glass blowing, about ponnels and being free blown and dip molds and some of the maybe terminology that you may or may not be familiar with probably won't be telling you anything you don't already know but uh, I just thought it's kind of good to go over some of these things um, I want to show first of all this thing is a uh, it's hard to get it in my camera screen here but that is an actual blowpipe uh, used to blow bottles with back in the 1800s and uh, I'm going to be referring to that from time to time. You can see this is the end right here that the, the mouth uh, was on. That's the mouthpiece of the blowpipe. He had like a, a insulated covering right here on this part, you know, to keep him from getting burned because the glass was molten hot. And then down at the bottom, you can see where it kind of flares out. And uh, I'll explain that more later. But... Anyway, I just thought it was interesting to have one of the old actual blowpipes and you can see the opening there and it's still got a lot of uh, glass, old glass residue on there from where they were blowing bottles. But uh, when we're talking about ponnels and things, uh, that'll help you to understand a little bit when you see that big end there. And they weren't all shaped like this. Some of them were just uh, tubes. But we'll deal with more of that later, but I just wanted to show that, just like an old actual blow blowpipe. But that thing weighs 12 pounds, man. You talk about being heavy. <laughs> it is heavy. But uh, the oldest bottle that I have, I've got several bottles that go back to Roman times, and this is one of them. This was like a little handled, applied handle uh, Roman bottle, and it has a pommel scar on the bottom of it. And I'll talk a little bit about the ponnels and what those are. But anyway, this one was all handmade, and I believe it was dug in uh, Germany or somewhere over in Europe. I got that many years ago from a buddy of mine. But, but I got three or four different ones. But I just thought it was interesting that this bottle is what we call free-blown. There was no mold used on that. It was just free-blown, and, um, and it was actually uh, had a little ponnel scar on the bottom of it, much like... Uh, you know, American made or European made bottles from the 17, 1800s. So things didn't change a whole lot, you know, over about 2,000 years. But uh, that's a real fragile little bottle there. But the pommel rod was uh, applied to the bottom of it with a little bit of glass or a bare rod and allowed the glass blower to remove his blowpipe from the lip and finish that lip and apply that little handle there on there. And then when they, uh, they snapped that rod off, it left that scar on the bottom called a pommel scar. And uh, we'll talk more about that. Uh, this is probably, in chronologically, the next bottle I'll show. And this one dates from probably the 1600s. So it's uh, nearly 400 years old. And it's a medicine bottle. And this bottle was blown into what's called a dip mold. It was a round cylinder and this bottle was just blown straight down into it and pulled straight out and that's called a dip mold it left no mold seams on the bottle so as we talk about dip mold blown bottles there's no mold seams on those and this one also has a pommel scar which it's a little hard to see I don't know if this is going to show up very good here I'm trying to get some sunlight but it has a little glass tip pommel rod and you can see it's kicked up in there it's got like a what's called a kick up or a sunken bottom but it has a little cone shaped kick up that allowed the glass blower to remove his blowpipe from the lip of the bottle and apply this little flared lip or flare the lip out with had like a iron nail or some little lipping tool that he would have had so you can see it's a real crude little flared lip on that one but that bottle has no mold seams and again it's that's real early. It's you know 1600s, maybe early 1700s, but but that's an old one. And then before we move on from free-blown bottles, this is one that uh, you'll see these. In fact, I have this very bottle on eBay. You'll see them on eBay and places. And it's called an an onion, a Dutch onion. 
and it was free blown also you know they blew that bottle and uh, formed it without the use of a mold you see it's just kind of a round globular shape and again as the blowpipe was still in the lip of the bottle an assistant would come along and apply the rod and this one they pushed up into it had a glass um, tipped iron rod much like the one I showed you here a while ago and it had a little bit of glass on the end molten glass and they stuck it in the bottom of the bottle and it would hold that bottle until they applied you know removed the blowpipe and formed that lip so this is what's called an open panel this is one of the more common types of panels that you'll see on bottles before 1860 called an open panel has a little open ring in the middle of it I guess that's why they started calling it open panel I don't know but that allowed him to take the blowpipe off and form this lip. This particular bottle has a, a laid on ring. This was a separate piece of molten glass that the glass blower uh, applied on the neck of this bottle here. So that's called a laid on ring collar. And that was a real popular bottle for rum. It was from 1740 to 1770s, colonial period. Uh, very popular rum bottles. A lot of those were found in uh, French Guiana down there in the Essequibo River. That's where a whole bunch of them came from. But you don't dig them much anymore. You gotta get way back in the 1700s. This is another example of a free blown bottle that was blown without the use of any kind of a mold. And this one is a New England chestnut flask. Very popular uh, throughout New England. That's where they were made in some of the New England glass houses. And it has a nice color to it. But again, no mold seams. And you'll be able to see very faintly, but it does have a pommel scar on the bottom. And that's also called an open pommel. It was just a, a rod with a little bit of molten glass on the tip of it. And it would stick on the bottom of that bottle. And when they popped that off of there, it left that little scar called a pommel scar. And just as a little sidebar here, you can see the amount of wear on the bottom of that bottle. It's one way you can kind of tell originals many times from, from reproductions is the original ones usually have uh, quite a bit of wear if they're really early bottles like this one. It dates probably to 1815, possibly older, and it has a little applied ring lip on it. Can you see that little crude? laid on ring of glass there. It was actually a sheared lip where the blowpipe was was popped off and that real ring laid on there. And what they did with the the blowpipe is it was stuck you know in the before they applied this lip on uh, you had the blowpipe there and they used a little wooden uh, paddle or something that was wet and they would use you know slide that around the the lip of the bottle here while the blowpipe was still attached and it would weaken that glass and then all they do is just tap the the blowpipe and it would it would pop off of there but it was real jagged so they had to finish that some some way well, they put that little applied lip on there and I'll talk more about applied lips but that's what that is that's an applied lip and you'll hear bottle collectors all the time refer to applied lips <laughs> and this is another one before we move on from free blown I think it's my last example I'm going to show of a free blown bottle and this is a little a small size liquor bottle you can see it's not very big and this was uh, glad to dig this one it was a real early pit it's one of the only bottles I got out of it but it also has a, a pommel scar on the bottom of it a glass Pommels. Now, oftentimes these are called sand pommels. Uh, there's a lot of, you know, debate on, you know, sometimes what you'd call it a sand pommel or a, you know, glass pommel or whatever. But this one has a little bit of glass stuck on it, so it must have been some kind of a glass tip rod. But you can see how crude the base of that bottle is, and it was it was free blown, and they would have used uh, like paddles to form the sides of that, probably rolling it. A little but you can see here it has almost a the, the base of the bottle pooches out a little bit but just a real crude old bottle and that one also has a laid on ring collar on it and it's probably from the late 1700s I'm guessing 
the hole I dug it out of was like 1810, 1820, but I think the bottle's quite a bit older. But it's an olive green. You can see the bubbles in the glass. A lot of the early blown bottles have a lot of bubbles in them. Um, but that's a nice little liquor bottle, some kind of a wine bottle. And that's the free blown bottles. <clears throat> and then the, the other bottles you see are called dip mold. And there's one here. I'm going to put a couple more up here just to show as examples of what dip mold bottles are. There's three of them there. There's another one. Okay. So those, those bottles right there were all blown uh, in a dip mold. And that means they're, they were blown straight down into the mold and pulled straight out. And they leave no mold seams. So this was an early clear one that it has a solid bar panel. It was a solid rod tipped with glass, molten glass on the end. And it was stuck on the bottom of the bottle. And it just left a solid scar. There's no circle in the middle, so the glass blower was able to lip that uh, finish on there like a flared lip. And that's an old clear flint glass, which flint glasses kind of use this as a term, term that uh, in early glass they would add lead to it many times. And it would, uh, you know, as a decolorizer, it is a real hard material and it powdered lead and it would form what they call flint glass. A lot of the early uh, glassware, clear dishes and cut plates and pitchers and things were made out of uh, flint glass and quite a few of the bottles were blown flint glass. This little mold, dip mold blown bottle here is is square or if you want you can call it eight sided. I call them square with little concave sunken corners but you can see the nice open panel on that one. See the hollow ring there? And they they use that on utility bottles up to about, you know, 1860. And then, then they used a different device called a snap case that didn't leave any panel scar on the bottom. So that was a kind of a square one, just to show the difference in shapes. This one is not quite square, it's almost rectangular or eight-sided with concave panels and it also has an open panel scar these were probably dating from 1840s or 50s and that one has uh, part of the original old label on it that was kind of neat it's probably found in an attic or something I didn't find that one I got in in a, on a deal but you can see the lip that they put on that one it was more of a tapered collar or graduated collar it was applied on there and this was a nice colored one here. You don't see too many of them in a nice uh, yellow amber color like that. So I was glad to get that one. And it has a uh, glass panel scar on it. Not an open panel, but it was tipped with glass. So that was kind of a real rough, rough panel scar on the bottom of that one. So that one probably dates like 1840s. 1850s but again it's just a cylinder dip mold bottle was blown straight down in there and pulled out and left no mold seams and just a couple more examples of those here was another one in little vials with a flared lip a little flint glass and again it has the bar panel on it so when you see those you're you're pretty old if you're digging and this was kind of a bigger jar. Let me see if I can get it here where I can see it. I apologize for the jerky round here. Uh, this was a utility like a food jar. And it has the solid bar panel on it. I don't know if you can see that or not very clearly. But it's just got a solid circular ring of glass stuck on there. Kind of jagged. And it was a solid rod. It wasn't a hollow blowpipe but it was a solid rod and then they folded over that lip and rolled it over to, to make that collar wide mouth almost like a fruit jar but again no mold seams on it so that's what those are this bottle is called a uh, half post blown it was uh, blown in a dip mold so there's no side seams and then there was a second 
layer of glass. It was dipped back into the molten glass and as you see a ring around the shoulder here where my finger is, there's like a little ring around here where a second layer of glass was coated on the outside of that bottle. Um, the Germans perfected that. It's called a German half post and those were usually from the 1700s up to about 1830s. This was most likely a cologne bottle being small and it has some gold enamel hand painting on that and that one also has the pommel scars you see and it's a solid glass rod pommel on that and then they removed the blowpipe and formed that ring lip there flared lip and they ground that one on the inside it would have taken a glass stopper which I don't have it with it I don't know what I did with it but it's around here somewhere but you know that was a nice little clone bottle probably from 1820s around that period and they they took and formed the sides on this one probably too to form it better with with paddles some of them are real crude in fact I think I got an example here let me see if I can find here it is here's a called a case gin bottle and this one was blown in a tapered dip mold you know it didn't have any hinges on the mold and they pulled it straight up out of the mold and it also has an open pommel on the bottom of it and uh, we dug this one out of about 1840s context but you can see how crude the sides are on this I don't know if I'll be able to show it but the sides are really crude and misshapen <laughs> they're really nice nice crude old bottle here but then the lip on that one see how they applied the lip a little flared some people call them a hog snout uh, lip on that but that was a, a gin bottle they're referred to as case gins by collectors that typical uh, shape there and you can see on the bottom of it almost was pushed up you can see it almost forms like little feet on the bottom those are usually uh, pretty older you know almost always before 1860s and um, that one particular one had in the mold had like a little X or a star or something you can't hardly see it because I get I should wash it up a little better but but it has that open pommel scar a little open ring in the middle circular and uh, so anyway that's just example of that. Um, another early one that was blown in a dip mold. And you can see some of them are big. Some of them are small. Some of them are really big around like this one. And this is an old black glass rum or ale bottle. Probably from 1820s or older. And it has a sand pommel which they had a large rod kind of like the end of this rod I just showed you down here. See how big around that is? and that would have been rubbed in sand you know, some kind of material and then when they dipped it in the glass the sand would would help it to be able to be removed from the bottle a little easier so that one there just left kind of a little scratchy uh, pommel scar on, on it but big most sand pommels are large and they are generally before uh, 1850 most of the times they sand panels they were still used them on like champagne bottles and wines and things like that up into the you know mid 1860s but this example is early and it has a double ring applied lip on there so when we say applied lip remember that means that um, once the blowpipe was removed they applied that lip on there afterwards and um, I'll show some later examples that are a little easier to to see but this is just an old old wine bottle. You can see it's olive green. And let me see what else we got here. Wanted to show a an example of a blown in a mold bottle that was not a dip mold. And I'm not gonna be able to see it, I don't believe. But it's a three-piece mold. This was blown the bottom where my hand is was one piece, like a cup, like a dip mold but the top of the mold was hinged and right here where my thumb is the mold separates and you can see it runs up onto the neck but that's a three-piece mold bottle and it also has a sand pommel and again the rod 
coated with a little layer of sand and it has usually a little scratchy sometimes real rough texture to it almost like sandpaper and then it had a applied lip on that one that was a little little ale bottle probably from 1840s 50s and another type of panel is called an iron panel so on the bottom instead of a glass rod or sand tip uh, this one was just a bare iron rod, and this was an old fruit jar, a Cunningham glass works out of Pittsburgh from the 1850s, and they used a bare iron rod on this one. You can see how it left a lot of the red uh, iron in in the bottom of that ball. That's a real good example of that. And another one here is a. Um, the Roback Stomach Bitters and you can see it's got a nice iron panel scar in that one also so that's what those are if you see a bottle with that on there it's, it's usually always before 1860 and this was probably from the mid 1850s and this has a real nice red iron panel and again they they removed the blowpipe and applied that lip you can see it's got the applied tapered collar on there and those were real popular in bitters bottles, you know, shaped like, you know, bitters or log cabins. We always like them. Don't dig them very much, though. And then uh, another bottle. This was blown in a mold. And you can see this one has embossing, raised lettering. And that's what we're after as collectors many times. We're after the bottles with the, with the embossed lettering in there that identifies what it is. So this one was blown in a in a hinged, you know, like a two-piece mold, an iron mold, and those will always have seams on them. Although this one's very hard to see, it's not a good example for that. But I wanted to show the the panel on that one. It's got an open panel, you know, the circular ring with a hollow spot in the middle. But the original in the mold, you can see it. It's oval. You see, there's like a depressed oval spot there. And sometimes you see these with a big oval panel, big old iron panel that's oval shaped or rectangular. But anyway, I didn't want to take time to show all that, but you can see the nice embossing, you know, in the glass. So that takes a mold there. It couldn't be a dip mold because it would eliminate all that embossing. So whenever the glass blower got ready to finish this one, again he chose to use a, a tapered collar on this one and what I want to show you next here is an actual lipping tool and this again is really heavy so I apologize for my camera work here but you can see this was a very heavy iron uh, tool as I show it in profile here you can see that part in the middle would stick down inside the neck of the bottle and you can see where this thing would come together it was movable and so as it was put in the neck of the bottle and the molten glass was applied then this tool was clamped over it and spun around the lip of that bottle and you can kind of see this was for a large bottle this was for a bigger bottle than that medicine but you can see how that was like a tapered collar there that would have formed around the neck of that big bottle and it would uh, smooth that molten glass out forming the lip on there but that's what that was called a lipping tool and I'll set it down here on the floor so you may see it a little bit better there but I have some of those come out old glass plants and I used to collect some of them things back in the days when you could get those they're hard, really hard to find now because all the old glass companies all got rid of all their stuff but that's what they did with them. They took a, a lipping tool to apply that lip. So an applied lip bottles where you can see the crudeness underneath them, uh, they generally, that goes up to about 1880. Most bottles before 1880 had some kind of applied lips. Some of them they tooled, some of them they flared, you know, like that. Um, those are all examples of older flared lip bottles. And then there was also another one called a uh, rolled-in lip. You can see like on this example, this medicine bottle. So it's just the difference of uh, how they wanted to finish that lip on there. But they very rarely left them uh, burst, you know, jagged 
later on they, you see a lot of the English inks and bottles with them jagged burst tops but this again had the open pommel you see a little round medicine bottle that was a Bragg's Arctic liniment from St. Louis from 1850s and this same bottle actually the same hole I dug this one out of I got a couple others that were not pommeled and they look just like it they had the rolled lip but they're made probably in 1858 to 1860 and this one they just happened to pommel and the other ones they didn't but oftentimes it you know if you're talking about value of bottles the uh, the ones with the pommels are usually always worth quite a bit more um, and yet they can look exactly the same so anyhow that's that's another open pommel um, just a couple more uh, examples of things here. This is more what you would call um, a ring or a disc pommel. And you can see it was a, a real jagged, you know, rough ring of glass around the outside of this rim. This happened to be a, a whiskey shot glass, you know, small whiskey taster or tumbler glass. But it has that sharp ring of glass around there. So it's not an open pommel, it's not a sand pommel. <laughs> there's just different kinds of pommels but um, they're all meaningful that's what that one was this was another uh, black glass bottle with a sand pommel as you can see in there just as another example as you can kind of see it's kicked up in there and it's kind of rough almost a sandpaper texture uh, to that one and it was blown in a dip mold no no mold seams are visible on that one the lip was applied and you can get into whole thing study on these lips because especially on these black glass bottles you can date them a lot of times by those lips the way they're made but um, anyway that's about all I've got right now to show I got a couple more just um, you know wine bottles um, this was a real jagged open pommel pushed up into that one just a gnarly jagged pipe pommel it was a blowpipe and which made sense because they had blowpipes all around these glass factories so they might as well just use them hollow blowpipes for their pommel rods and put a little glass on there and stick it on the bottom it held it and worked fine until they came up with better methods and but this bottle has what's called a blob seal on the shoulder and again the glass blower took a uh, piece of molten glass just gobbed it on the shoulder and then had a stamp like an iron or a brass or copper stamp and stamp that embossing in there hot bar sock it's a French wine it's probably from 1820s and you can see it has the lip was just sheared off on that one it wasn't snapped off or popped off it was sheared you know smoothly and then that little string of glass laid around there on the collar real crude and this one's in the ground for a long time you can see that rainbow iridescence and that's another another subject for another day but um, I always like that I leave it on there I really like the rainbow iridescence on the early bottles and then another one that is similar to that one only this one is an aqua colored bottle but it's another early I believe it's an olive oil bottle but it's French and again has the kind of rough sheared lip with a laid on ring this one has no scar but if you look how much that's pushed up in there I mean it's about over three inches you know, it has a kick up in the base of that bottle well to me I, I know it's no rough pommel scar but that acted like a pommel it actually held as the rod was pushed up in there whatever it was that held this bottle while the glass blower removed his blowpipe and was able to um, apply this seal yeah, and emboss that one but again that one um, I dug that one out of 1840s 1830s material so you know by all means it should have been pommeled but it's it's not as far as any kind of glass or roughness but I think it's it's from that period so it was sort of like a pommel that's what held the the bottle and just had to push it up deep there for it to hold and after 1860 then they started coming in with what's called a snap case almost acted like my fingers it held the bottom of the bottle um, and it 
allowed them to remove the blowpipe and finish the lip and it didn't leave any scar like these. Yeah, it's called a snap case. Okay, I got called away. Sorry about that. And um, I'm kind of regrouping on this. I apologize. Uh, not very good quality there on my video. I uh, should have been more organized on that. But anyway, I'm going to try to um, come back and uh, take off where I left off there and talk about a lot of terms that we use as bottle collectors and diggers over the last 50 years of stuff I've gleaned and how to te how to date bottles more to what most of us see uh, bottles from 1860 up to 1930s and talk about a lot of those kind of things and the applied lips and the tooled tops and whittling and what it is and what it ain't and different things about uh, the bottles and the glass so we'll get into all that and I hope you uh, stay with me, <laughs> uh, bear me out and um, we'll see where we go. If this doesn't have much interest then I don't think I'm going to do this no more but I just thought I'd give it a try and we'll see what happens. Uh, hopefully the next one will be a little bit better. So, Alright, I think I got a dig coming up tomorrow. Um, Privy Paul and I are going to be going out. We're going to try to get something going. It's, it's cold and the ground is froze but... Um, you know we got to dig so all right well stay tuned and we hope everybody's doing well and um, hope you're having a good lord's day today and uh, we'll be uh, praying for our country and you pray for us and and uh, god bless you and we'll see you in the next video